Ladies and gentlemen, every year I get very excited during a period of time known as the Consumer Electronics Show. So the Consumer Electronics Show is a really cool event where wonderful things are displayed to the world by great companies for the first time ever. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the top few exciting things that came out of CES 2024. So without much further ado, let's get straight to the video. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to CES 2024. So this year, the theme of CES was AI plus hardware. Can you put all the wonderful AI models that are out on the cloud into devices? But the first thing that released all the show was two transparent TVs. Let's check it out. So first, there was a TV from Samsung. This is the transparent micro LED TV. And as you can see, it looks gorgeous. On the other hand, LG displayed a signature OLED TV called the T. Check it out. So the OLED T series had a dual viewing system, which means that if you want it to be transparent, you can. If you don't want it to be transparent, you can click a button and then a screen appears behind that makes everything opaque. But it seems that LG's TV will actually be in the hands of consumers much sooner than Samsung's TV. That's right, they're going to be putting it out on sale shortly. Now, we don't yet know what these are going to cost, especially in India, but prepare to sell one or two kidneys just to get access to this. The second really exciting announcement from CES was all the exciting little robots with AI inside of them. First, let's check out Samsung's Bolly. So that was Bali. It seems like a very nice wireless projector that follows you around the house, is able to do smart device control, but that's not the only home AI agent announced. LG had their own addition. So it seems similar to Bali. I couldn't find mention of a projector in it, but it still seems really cool that we're getting the ability to have pets that follow us around the house, but are still smart and that can talk back to you. So two points that are very quick homework for us is that the LG's device, it works on LG's ThinQ platform of smart devices. It has all the usual stuff you'd expect, which is face and posture recognition, smart home management. It's powered by an LLM, so you can expect it to generatively give you responses. Samsung's AI-powered Bolly also has spatial LiDAR, which means it can kind of send light to its environment. And based on the amount of time that light takes to come back, it can estimate what its environment looks like. It makes a 3D model of the environment. It uses IR transmitters, so it can even control things like your TV and things that are not technically smart devices. Now, we don't have pricing information for either, but whenever it's available, we'll buy it, we'll break it down, we'll review it for you. One last piece of robotics that was there in the halls of CES, but not really fully demoed, was the unitary humanoid robot. Now, this looks like a real human that you can buy and have running around in your house, but it's too early for us to make videos on. Now, the third exciting announcement was for all gamers, people who run AI models on their computers like me, and people who are into crypto mining. NVIDIA launched its super range of GPUs, which is graphic cards, and they seem to be fairly competent. So they launched the super variants of their RTX 4070, 4070 Ti, and 4080 GPUs. There aren't any new features. These are just better GPUs, because this isn't a new lineup like the RTX 50 series. If people are watching closely, Nvidia also announced a slightly different card a few weeks ago, but that was not part of CES, so we're not gonna cover it right now. A major change with all these cards is increased number of CUDA cores, which means better machine learning and AI performance and higher clocked memory. Now, Nvidia claims that the new RTX 4070 Super is faster than the RTX 3090. Think about it. At some point, the RTX 3090 was almost on the top of the stack of the 3000 series. And now the RTX 4070 Super is already faster than it. Now, a lot of people in my team say, Varun, I want to build a PC and I want the top end graphic card and I want the top end CPU. But most likely, instead of you buying the top end from the previous generation thinking you're saving cash, it's better to buy a lower end or a mid end from this generation because they're almost always better. 
Now the RTX 4070 Ti Super is 2.5x faster than the RTX 3070 and the RTX 4070 Super and RTX 4070 Ti Super are going on sale later this month on 24th January and the price starts at $549 or about 45,000 rupees. In India, you're not going to get it at 45,000 rupees. Customs are going to be added on top of this. Shady suppliers are going to add their own margins. So it'll probably start at about 70K to a lakh. The next exciting announcement CES were the cars, the electric vehicles. And guess what? Almost every electric vehicle came out and had ChatGPT or equivalent in it. But what Sony did was very interesting. They drove it on stage with a PS5 controller. We've taken the beast that's a car, made it electric. And by the way, I have a full breakdown of electric vehicles on a different channel. Go check it out if you're interested. And we have tamed these electric cars to a point where you can drive them with a controller. Check out the video. Today, I'm excited to present the pub progress and updates of Aphira. Using this controller, I'd like to show you an aspect of the software-defined vehicle. We aim to revolutionize how people move, making mobility interactive and expressive by combining the ADA simulator with AR. Now, this is a concept car called Afila, and you can't actually go drive this tomorrow. It's a concept car. But what's interesting is they showed all the things that are going to be in cars a few years from now, which is an Unreal 5 representation of the entire car's body and surroundings, a beautiful dashboard, and of course, AI-powered tracking systems. More than anything, almost all the cars displayed at CES this year looked from the future and they looked absolutely gorgeous. Now, whether consumers actually want those kind of looking cars, I don't know. The next interesting thing from CES is that Alexa is getting an upgrade thanks to character AI, which means that you can have Alexa talk to you as famous characters. Here's an example. Hi, Vin. My name is Yasmin, and I'm your AI assistant. I can help answer questions, brainstorm ideas, draft emails, write code, give advice, and much more. What can I help you with? Now, I hate to sound like a little bit of a downer, but I've actually used character.ai, and I don't think it's that great. Almost all the characters kind of sound like each other. They don't have wildly different personalities. So I think people will eventually want one person on the other end, on the AI end, that they already relate to and they'd like to keep it like that. And if people do want a specific character, they'll want a character with a rich history. So that character would have had to write a lot of books in their own style, been through a lot of lived experiences that that character is able to write down ideally. And it's very hard to do this with fictional characters and you end up making them generic, which may be a problem with many of these characters. The next thing that was announced at CES was neural headphones. What the hell are these things? This is the first time I'm hearing of this. So let's check it out. Neural headphones are a new category of headphones. And what they do is they tap into the auditory nerve and they can kind of read your mind. I know that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but let's read through this. It allows completely hands-free operation. It allows to play, pause, change volume, skip songs with just thoughts. These headphones are expected to hit the market this year. Yearable, for example, will start shipping their $500, about 40,000 rupees neural headphones in a month. I'll tell you how they work for the technically minded. These headphones, they incorporate neural sensors to measure brain waves, So it's kind of like an EEG. And they offer various functionalities, which is the hands-free control as we spoke about. It also does things like it can enhance your relaxation. The Naki Neural Earbuds, Neurgear Zen Buds, MW750 Neuro Headphones, they all kind of do the same things. The Naki Neural Earbuds, for example, was developed as an alternative to brain implants, allowing users to control their Windows or Mac computers using gyroscopic muscle and brainwave sensors. So it's pretty cool technology. But what I find more interesting than the fact that you can control the play, pause, skip, etc., is the fact that many of these can actually stimulate your vagus nerve. So very fun science learning here. Most humans have a vagus nerve. It usually travels down this area of the body and it connects many different parts of your body. It's called the wandering nerve and it controls everything from digestion to sweating to mood. And many people with depression actually implant a vagus nerve stimulator, which actually sends tiny shocks to your vagus nerve and makes you less depressed over time, less anxious, and have better digestion. For the even more scientifically inclined people, there are two systems of the body. One is the sympathetic nervous system that controls fight and flight when you're exercising, when you're running, when you're under stress. And then there's the parasympathetic nervous system that controls relaxation, digestion, sleep, etc. And what you want is both of these to be in harmony. 
But the world that we live in right now, we are most likely sympathetically dominated, which means that we're always in the state of fight and flight. Now, the implantable vagus nerve stimulator is far too expensive, requires invasive surgery. So people found that the ends of the vagus nerve are actually available in certain parts of the ears. So you can actually send the electrical signals from outside, touching the ears, and that can actually stimulate the vagus nerve. Now, there are lots of peer-reviewed studies on this, but we don't settle at just peer-reviewed studies. So let me show you something very interesting. So this is actually a homemade vagal nerve stimulator. This usually comes with pads. This is a TENS device. It usually comes with pads. Use it to stimulate certain muscles. But you can buy these clips on Amazon. And please don't try this at home. This is just for experiment's sake. And I did a demo where I put them on very specific parts of the same year, stimulated my vagus nerve, and then check my heart rate after. So the interesting thing is, my heart rate actually went down right after using this. I felt slightly more relaxed. Now, it's very easy to put all that down to placebo. I might have just felt like I was going to feel relaxed, therefore it helped. But I have seen this help me a few times, and there are peer-reviewed studies behind it. The problem is carrying this around is kind of painful, right? It's a big, clunky device. These things need to be put in just the right place. You need a little bit of electrode gel for it to conduct properly. And the headsets that are going to come out this year are equipped to do all of what's available in this, plus the ability to switch songs with just your thoughts. See, one of the cool things about us talking about technology is as far as I can, I will try to buy it, I will try to use it, sometimes far before anybody else, right? And one of the technologies that I've been very, very excited about for God knows how long is virtual reality. And you know which company really wants to get into virtual reality, which they're now calling spatial computing thanks to Apple? It is Sony. They announced their industrial VR headset. Let's take a look at it. We are happy to announce a new solution for spatial content creation. With a crisp viewing experience and intuitive interaction for 3D design, we are enabling creators to shape and edit 3D models. We are expanding the creation space by overlaying virtual objects into physical spaces. Now, this headset isn't available for consumers yet, but I'm really thankful that there are a bunch of companies that are taking Apple on in building very, very high quality headsets. While the Quest 3 is good, from what I've heard, it's nowhere close to the Vision Pro. And as soon as we get the Vision Pro, we will break it down. The next interesting product launch from CES is an AI-powered mirror. Let's take a look at it. What mirror is going to do is it is going to scan my face for a period of about 30 seconds. It's actually going to scan the blood flow patterns in my face. And then from there, it's going to make a health assessment based on the changes in my blood flow patterns. So this is a multimodal device. It can look at you. It can figure out from how you're looking, whether you're looking happy, sad, etc. It can make conversation with you over time. Look, the era of us putting AI into everything, including your fan, I promise you, AI is going to be in your fan at some point. Depending on whether you like it too hot, too cool, it's probably going to know just looking at you. So I hope all of you are ready for AI to be in everything. And at CES, we saw AI in almost everything. The last thing is a specific case for the iPhone that brings back a BlackBerry-like touch vibe. Check it out. Steve Jobs was right 17 years ago. If phones were going to reach the next phase of evolution, the physical keyboard had to go. But sometimes we look back on something we threw out a while back and say, you know what, maybe there's some good stuff we sacrificed along with the bad. In other words, maybe we threw the buttons out with the bathwater. So let's change that. So let's talk about that thing. Whether you call it simply clicks for iPhone or the delightfully pretentious precision typing instrument, at the end of the day, clicks is a keyboard accessory enclosed within a unibody silicone case. The connection to the iPhone is made through its lightning or USB port, so there's no Bluetooth link to worry about, nor any onboard battery. So quick summary. A, it's a physical keyboard. It's got multiple commands, so you can hold multiple keys like a control and shift that we sort of do on our PCs, which allow you to do interesting things with your iPhone. It's completely powered off the phone itself, so it sort of saps battery from your iPhone. It's very interesting that this thing exists, but it sort of feels like a gimmick. Now, the last thing from CES is the Rabbit R1, and we're doing a full video on the Rabbit R1, including my thoughts on it, so watch out for that. Now, I hope you really like this video. We're going to buy some of this technology, break it apart for you, see what we can learn, pick up insights, figure out what the companies behind this are doing. All of this for your viewing pleasure. So make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. 
आई सी यू नेक्स्ट टाइम बाय